buy it in bottles. Richard Ashcroft on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Now listen up, right? It's the Sony Awards this Thursday. Now, for those who don't know, the Sony Awards are like the the Oscars for for radio uh, presenters and producers and everything, right? So, and as you know, me and Steve, we love to win. We want to win this one. This is the last time the panel will be listening, so I want a good, a good, clean, tight show, okay. right? So no, no swearing, joking aside, no swearing, nothing controversial and and uh, nothing in bad taste. All right, just good well, luck out there. Aren't okay. we a little bit buggered then? <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. So all right, Carl. Yeah, that's all right. Just, it's just when you say things like, uh, you know, make it a good one. Sometimes it sort of puts a bit of pressure on and things slip out that you shouldn't say and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? Have you ever had that? What, when you can't? It's like, I'll tell you one, I'll tell you one story, right? I'll tell you a couple actually. Go that, on. That one's just come to mind r right now, right? There was a fella who, um, who my dad was gonna meet. I don't know if I told you this before, right? But, um, I have told you when, when it was a party and everyone was saying, Dave's coming, he looks like Ken Dodd. But don't say anything, have I told you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, go on, what is it again? And, uh, everyone's like, right, oh, and my dad's like, oh, I've never met him, I wonder if he does look like Ken Dodd, and everyone's saying, yeah, but don't say anything. Yeah. Because you'll accidentally, you know, say it and- The unbunctious, you might go, uh, uh, you unbunctious yeah. to meet you. So, the thing is, when this fella turns up, he did look like Ken, my dad couldn't believe it, first thing he said, nice to meet you, Ken. Oh, <laughs> oh no. His name's Dave. <laughs> and that's the sort of thing, there was another one, right? <laughs> Uh, at a station that I worked at in, uh, in Manchester, right, uh, there was this girl who worked in the newsroom, right, and, uh, she had a, a plastic arm, right? Right. And this presenter, nice bloke, he didn't, you know, he's not out to hurt anyone, went up to her, sat down, was chatting for a bit, touched the arm, said, what lovely skin you've got. <laughs> what did she say? I, I, I think, I think, I mean, she's probably used to it. So she wasn't bothered. And then, right, this one, this is brilliant. Um, this is a sort of gaffy made on air, right? <laughs> and like I say, he's a nice bloke, so he meant nothing by it, right? But he does this competition on the air, gets a caller on, right? And uh, he's talking to the woman, saying, you know, thanks for calling in and to play, I don't know, what, what have I got in my pocket or whatever they used to play on the show, right? And uh, talking to the woman, in the background there's this noise, right? Like, like that, right? So he's talking and he goes, uh, have you got a, uh, pet parrot? She said, no, it's my Down Syndrome kid. <laughs> oh dear. Oh. Uh, the, th the thing is, awards don't matter. No, I don't think so. Play record? I don't think so. So, we're not out to offend or annoy. <laughs> Appropriate words there. That's the Smiths and Panic. Don't worry about it, Carl. People know that there's- you haven't got a malicious bone in your body. So, uh, they- they, they know it's confusion. Don't worry. No, it did happen. So it's I not. know. I know, yeah. So, what have you been doing this week, Steve? Well, um, I'll tell you what, at the beginning of the week I was, um, incredibly annoyed by Carl. Why? Um, no, uh, well, no, because you, I remember you had a little discussion with Carl a while back saying that, um, you thought he was lazy at times. Yeah. And, you know, you had various criticisms of yeah, his, yeah, his, his work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got a call from him, he said, uh, oh yeah, I sh should've told you, um, I had a phone call, someone said that they were trying to get hold of Steve Merchant to offer him some lucrative voiceover work. Now you know- That is money I, for old It's money rope. for rope. It That's about, you're in there for about twenty minutes and it's thousands if of pounds. If there are children listening who are still at school, they should definitely, when the careers guy says, what do you want to do? Try and get voiceover, voiceover work. work. Just become a voiceover artist. It's money for old rope. Yeah. So I can't believe my luck because yeah. you know I love money for old rope. Yeah. And um, I said, well, what's the information? He said, oh, oh, I don't know. I deleted the message. It was on his answer. And he deleted the message. I said, right, when did the message come? He said, last week. So he took a week to tell me Why? that he had deleted the message. Why? Just because it wasn't for you? I mean, I don't know how selfish that is, Carl. Is that, no, what happened is, right? I got back a holiday. Mm. I was at home. Yeah. So I called up my voicemail. Yeah. Right, because I can do that. Yeah. Remote access, right? Because I've got to know what's going on at work. Of course. Called in. It was still my day off. I was going through the messages. Yes. Heard one from some company saying we're after Steve Merchant. Yeah. We're wanting to do some voiceover work. Yeah. Right. Mm. I can't remember the name of it, but Thanks. I thought right, I'll, I'll remember to tell Steve a week later. 
It doesn't matter, does it? You still got the message, and they-, they well, what's it, what message? Yeah, but voiceovers have to be done in the next couple well, of days. I didn't days. get the message. I got- all I got was, there was a company, I don't remember the name, and they phoned you the what voice over. Uh, well, how does that help me? There are hundreds of thousands of media companies. I, I you didn't take down a number, you didn't take down a name, nothing. I, I was more puzzled why they'd want you to voice anything. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't no, but listen to that voice. Oh, no, you must be annoyed. You must be you annoyed. Wanna, I mean, talk about rubbing salt into the wound. No, but listen to you. Oh, God. I don't know what you- I don't know how you think. I don't know what, how your mind works. Well, I was thinking there must be a tractor sale on somewhere. <laughs> I can't What do I care? What's no, going hang on a minute. Wait What's a minute. Wait a minute. The I worm don't has care. turned. I don't care if they want me to advertise, you know, <laughs> the latest designs in pirate fashion wear. I will do a voiceover because it's money for the rope. I don't care what you think of my voice. Someone was interested, they were offering me money. And you decided arbitrarily, oh, they probably wouldn't want it, they probably made a mistake, I, they wouldn't like the way he talks anyway, I'll delete the message. No, the thing is, right, I what get paid- What if that paid, had been a girl? I get paid to sit here on a Saturday, <laughs> yeah. right? Play CDs and that, help out with the show, get you decent prizes, I think I do me bit. Sure. Right? It isn't about running your voiceover work. So hang on, so Carl, let me just get this right. If someone was ever to phone me, right, trying to get in touch with you, to yeah. offer you work, you'd want me to just ignore the message. That is what you're saying to me. You'd prefer that I deleted the message, I ignored it altogether. That's what you'd want for me to do, that's what you'd want me to do. What, someone's calling you for some Someone's phoned me. They say, oh, oh, I can't, I don't know, I, I, I'm a friend of a friend, I've got your number, Steve. Uh, I want, love to use Carl Pilkington for yeah. a, 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 well, a exciting sex me, scene. So has it happened? Has well, it happened? I'm saying in the future, if it was to occur, <laughs> if it was to occur, do you want me to just ignore it? Is that what you prefer for me to do? Uh, well, it's not like that, though. I, d I did tell you, I told you the message. You didn't tell, what? You told me a week later with none of oh, the information I needed. Carl, um, that doctor called last week, that kidney's ready for that, um, little girl that you were doing that sponsored walk for. I forgot to tell you. Oh. I hope it's still alright. They keep it on ice, don't they? I think they do. Uh, uh, oh, selfish, Carl. Uh, so selfish. And you've lost us a second. Beautiful bit of, uh, Snoop on XFM, yeah? Mm -hmm. Kicking it with, uh, yeah, Ricky Gervais. Yeah, 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 sweet, sweet, sweet. Uh, Steve Merchant and, uh, Carl Pilkington. Uh, what has happened to Carl? Cause Carl, I thought, is, you know, is this sort of sweet little buffoon, almost childlike mm. in his, his ways, you know what I mean? Like Charlie Brown after some sort of head injury. And, <laughs> and now he's, and now he's coming back like that, having a go at- not- not caring about voiceover work. It's like- cause Heat have written about him a couple of weeks, it's like he thinks he's better than you in no, some well, way. No, I do care though, you're out of order saying that, right? Cause Carl, I've sorted you out with tickets for stuff. He Carl, doesn't turn up to. Carl, I received a phone call, you deleted the message offering me voiceover work, you're as bad as my agent. <laughs> <laughs> I don't- I'm appalled by it. <laughs> and I thought we were friends. <laughs> ah, at least his agent, when he does it, is losing himself money as well. Yeah, he, you, he, you, he, he you, exactly. You've got no comeback. You're still sweet, and to have a go is you. You've got a mank wine. Right. True voice. Like a cartoon Gallagher brother on Coronation Street. I mean, and Steve's- I mean, yes, Steve does sound like a, a Wurzel, but that Thanks. doesn't- Do you know what I mean? No, no. A, what about Jethro? Jethro does well. Jethro gets on Des O'Connor any time he wants. Just has to phone Des up. And he's on there. Straight on And me. he's whining like a Wurzel as well. So, you know, to say that that all right, is what, a rubbish- Alright, apart from that then, what else have I done? That's wound you up. But that's 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 a that's a good starting point because you haven't even apologised. No, it's a shock because that's the first time I've let you down, and I didn't really let you down because I passed on the message. You didn't. Well, we've been through it. You didn't okay. pass on the message. Saying I deleted a message for you is not passing on the message. Yeah. I mean, I just think what's happened is that you've got a little bit of celebrity now from the show. I, I mean, I've seen you being yeah. recognised in pubs and stuff, or people have come up and they said, "Are you Carl?" Because they've seen Ricky. Now it just seems to me that you are not keeping yourself grounded. You are just—you no. cannot deal with fame. You've not got the intelligence to cope no. with the celebrity, oh. and you're just becoming no, this kind getting. of ego-driven no, monster. Getting. No, it's getting. No, it's getting. It scares me, Carl. Getting you're not the man I remember. Look, a bit I, I put a lot of work into this yeah. on Saturday. This isn't my proper job, right? Mm. Where were you in the week? Oh, yeah, he's got you there. What? Where were you in the week? I said, I said, let's meet up, let's, you know, come up with some new features and that. Where were you? Carl, you phoned me yeah. about an hour before you wanted to meet. That is not what I would call. I is mean, that, that is arrogance right there. That's the way I work. That's arrogance right there. That's ego right there. He couldn't, he couldn't go, uh, it, I, uh, when I came in, he said, where's Steve? I said, Steve can't make it. I had to tell him why. Steve was staying in to tidy up because his landlady was coming. This, this he couldn't get over. He could not get over that you couldn't make it because you had to stay with your landlady. Is, is, he talked about it for about the hour when we were working. What are you talking, I, I, 
Last week I had a bad throat. You yeah, wouldn't what, tolerate what you that. Last you wouldn't week accept when you had a bad throat. Where, where were you? <laughs> Why couldn't we do any work then? Because you're at home with your mum and your dad. <laughs> you, you were on holiday, <laughs> weren't you? <laughs> Why didn't you get your mum and your dad to clean the flat? Oh, he's done it again. He's hey. done you again, mate. Play a record. How has he done me? What? <laughs> they live in Bristol. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah. The joke's on you. He couldn't get him to clean the flat. Ah, <laughs> I don't know who's laughing at who then. <laughs> right, listen. Can right. we just go back to laughing at Carl? Okay. Because I know right. where we stand there. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay. Do you want to, uh... That's the natural order of things. <laughs> I know, yeah. The world's gone topsy turvy. <laughs> he's, he's stepped out of the pecking yeah. order. Right. Well, someone who I don't let down, right, are the listeners of this show. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to uh, read out the prizes for uh, the busters? We'll get, we'll get that one. Oh, we're are we doing... not doing rock busters again, are we? Yeah. Well, it was a shambles last week. We we cancelled it two weeks ago. What? Oh, uh, it just, I mean, there, there you are right there, Rick. I mean, b both you and I, and let's be honest, we're the guys with, the, with our names on the poster. I know, it's yeah. It's supposed to be your show. And, and yet, our faces. Exactly, and yet. <laughs> we have to have, we have to be on tube stations with people laughing at yeah. us. Yeah, well, they're not laughing at me, really. They're, they're well, a good I don't know. Better, what do you think people think of the poster, Carl? Seriously. Uh. No, I don't want to know his opinion. It's just going to be insulting. <laughs> My yeah, point is this, he was Rick. Looking at you. My point is this, Rick. We used to be able to decide what the content of this show was. I now know. it's him. It's just him. He wants to do rock busters. He gets to do it. I know, and it's it's awful rock busters. Like, like, uh, Tourette's Trent Darby. Not only is that offensive, it doesn't work as a clue. Saying that, have you come up with anything for this week? What's the prices? Oh, we got the prices. We've got uh, a brand new XFM, a stylish XFM uh, DJ bag. That is actually nice. quite nice, actually. Yeah, we've got in there a 12-inch uh, from uh, the XFM Remix album. This has got the Cure on there and the Prodigy remixes from them, which is uh, quite handy. We've got a little mm. mouse mat there with the XFM logo on. And here's what everyone's waiting for, the CDs and DVDs. Yeah. Um, once again, the X list. This is the compilation that XFM have put out. It's actually very good. Uh, Smash Hits, The Reunion. Let me see what we've got on there. Aha, obviously, Wham, Duran Duran, all your favourite 80s and 90s classics. Another copy of DVD, uh, Steve Coogan's Coogan's Run DVD. What else is this here? Low Fidelity All Stars. Blah, 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 blah. That's some. There's Voodoo House and Ghost Funk on there, Rick. I'm sure oh, that'd be right up your street. Yes. And uh, also on DVD, Man Child. Is that Child. with or without wrecked train? <laughs> uh, so yeah, not not a bad little selection there, Carl. You're, yeah, you've done, well you're done well there. So go on and do the clues. Then let's do Rockbusters now. Well, I'll, I'll bung a song on. And we'll, we'll, well, yeah. I love the fact that he was taking the piss out of your voice. I'll bung a song on. <laughs> hey, it's tripe and cow wheels tonight. Uh, now as griddling as gravy. <laughs> to be honest, to Carl, let's be honest, if Ricky Gervais can get voiceover work, do you know what there's I mean? got to be a place for me. Where do you think the place for him is? Well, look, right, you were talking about your face on the poster. <laughs> it's not all bad, because I read something last night that can help you out. <gasps> right? And it's amazing. So we're talking about that. Play a record, Carl. Warren Zevon ain't that pretty at all on it, I think. 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Right, Carl, calm now. The Sonys, they're listening. We've got to win this award. We're just bickering, right? What, what's this thing that can help Steve out? What are you talking no, about? No, no, we'll talk about that in a bit. What are we doing now, We'll then? do, we'll do Rockbusters. Get that up and running. Yes, sir. Get the email busy. Thank yeah? you, sir. <laughs> yeah, right. okay. Go on, then. Right, so... You know how it works. Cryptic clues, initials. Well, as I say, I say every week, they're not they're not strictly cryptic. It's more what am I thinking that starts with these letters. Some cryptic a word. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a word? Cryptic? Because <laughs> oh. anyway, oh god. So last week, uh, one of them was these people from the East Midlands can't help swearing. Yeah, something. Tourette's Trent Darby. Tourette's Trent That's Darby. That's the sort of shite we're dealing with to try and get a Sony. Right, so, uh, here's the clues and that. <laughs> First one. And that. Um, what are we after here? The artist? Yeah. The band name or solo artist? It's, uh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. Right. Go on. Uh, so the first one, the, the hitchhiker needs a lift, but in something bigger than a car. <laughs> Go on, what's the initials? The H, right? The hitchhiker needs a lift, but in something bigger than a car. Yeah. Right? Second one. Don't be selfish. Hand some of it out to your mates. Right. The initial there is C. Right. Yeah. Don't be selfish. Hand some of it out to your mates. Uh, and the I'm third sure that's one, not what is Carl. He's selfish. No. Nope. Begins with C. Right. <laughs> and and the third one, the Scottish fellas can't get into their emails. <laughs> right. Um, okay. The, the Scottish, Scottish fellas can't get into their emails. Go on then. Right. The initials there K L. 
Right, so quickly again, the hitchhiker needs a lift, but in something bigger than a car, VH. Yeah. Don't be selfish. Hand some of that out to your mates. Right. Let's see. This is your last chance, Carl. And the Scottish fellas can't get into their emails. If I hear out. anything like Wet Knee Houston or D Trout Spinners or Tourette's Trent Derby coming out of this, we're never doing it again. Okay? Have you got monkey news for this week? Uh, don't know if I want to do it this week. So, just just because breakfast do it and that, and uh, just just leave it maybe this week. See what happens. See if we need it. See, we'll see. I, sometimes I don't know. Play a record a minute, Carl. I wanna talk to you, I'll talk to you off air. Play a record. What? What's the, what's the, what's the, uh, uh email address again? Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Okay. Right? That's where the email, the answer's in. So we've got to, rem we've got to remind you whose show it is. Play a record. Right. <laughs> Stop my head, Ivan Dando on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais and with me arguing like nutters are <laughs> Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Okay. Alright? Calm down. Right. Right, let's just chill. Let's okay. just chill. Yeah, right. D what did you do last night, Rick? Uh, I watched I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here. I tried last week, I knew Tuffner was gonna come through. Mm. I knew he was. I went went to put a bet on and it was eleven to four and I thought, oh that's not worth it. I could put on four hundred quid and I reckon I'd have won eleven hundred because I reckon he's gonna win. Yeah. So, uh, that is annoying. I suppose if you could go back in time you'd probably change things. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I'd do if I could go back in time? I'd go back in time and stop Hitler from being born. <laughs> <laughs> but then it might be worse because someone else might have come along and he'd been even better. It's like a novel. <laughs> yeah, you're like right. Ben Alton would write a novel yeah. like that or something, wouldn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, our things would be different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, popped to the cinema last night and it was a joy of an experience because for what the first time I wanted to see X-Men 2. I, I want to see that. Yeah, really I saw one. I, I didn't, I don't like that sort of thing. I've never been a comic book, never been a, um, a geek like yourself. Not yourself, yeah, but, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. but I mean, you're not a geek in that, in that sense, you're different. I mean, Not in the traditional sense. No, 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 I'm, no. I'm one of those sexy geeks. Like yeah. Modern sexy geeks. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I really enjoyed it and two's meant to be even better, isn't it? I really enjoyed it, yeah. Oh, it's, uh, it's good fun. But, uh, the, but more so than the film was the fact that the actual cinema experience for the first time in a long time, I actually enjoyed because I just, I I have such a problem with the cinema. Well, I, I can't go. I have to wait about three weeks that dies down and go in the afternoon. I can't be sat next to people. I, I don't know why people go to the cinema to eat. Ha have something before you go in there. Yeah. Rattling, crunching. Why, why, why is this experience? This this film has cost fifty million pounds. Mm. It's meant to be an emotional, artistic experience. It's not meant to be something that's on while you're chowing down. Yeah. I don't know. Then, but people leave their mobile on. I want when someone answers it. You go. I can't talk now. I, mean, I want to go. Don't you smack them on their face with it. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, I, uh, I went to, to the cinema a while back to see Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Oh, yeah. That art house film. And, um, a woman sat next to me, huge, fat blubber of a woman. But she's, it's up to her. She's earned enough money. She can eat more than she needs. Sure, but don't squeeze into a seat next to me in the cinema. <laughs> right, with your flesh, you know, curving over the armrest that we're having to share. Oh, right, God. next to her, a little we weasel of a husband. She's got one of those huge, kind of, um, yeah, hog-sized barrels of popcorn. <laughs> you don't reckon he was one of them feeders? It was very similar. It oh. really was. She's, she's, she, as you say, she's chowing down on the, uh, on the popcorn. She's one of those women who, uh, she's not come out to see a film, she's come out to eat, and if a film happens yeah. to be showing, then she'll watch it. Yeah. Really wounds me up. He's got the hot dog and everything. She's in and out. Popcorn already annoys me because and I she don't... goes to him, are you gonna eat that? He goes, well, I was thinking of it. You're gonna to me. You're gonna to me now. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know why it was that popcorn became the thing you eat in the cinema. It's like you say, you've made these films and someone's there thinking, well, we've made this great film, we've got the sound mix right, but what we need is something that'll just slightly, uh, irritate everyone yeah. during uh, the film. And just see the, the size, the just see the size of the buckets yeah. they go in there popcorn. But and why not serve soup or something? Or, or yogurt? Oh, the slurping would drive me mad. And, and the spoon touching the, the bottom of the thing would drive me mad. Don't serve anything. There's no reason you have to do this and go, oh god, I need to eat. Well, this eat was- plan it. You don't, you don't go and play tennis eating what, you, you plan it, don't you? Well, what? exactly. <laughs> exactly. Eat before you come out. Yeah. Have a sandwich. Have a corned beef sandwich. You know what? Right. Out. What annoyed me is I found out in, in uh, across America when they showed Schindler's List, they banned popcorn, yeah. right, out of respect to the film. What? So they're saying all oh, the other films? Oh, sod it. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah. But well, this one cost hundred million. Ah, it doesn't matter. You can eat popcorn through that. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, ban it through all films. Well, this woman was one of those ones. She may as well have had a trough <laughs> in front of her. <laughs> 
I mean, she was a state, right? Oh, she's so nice. God. She's an idiot as well. Because the trailer comes from, I remember at the time, the trailer came on for AI, that film AI. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I don't know if you've seen the trailer for it, but it's something like, I don't know exactly, but it's something like, uh, um, Martin is a, uh, six-year-old boy. Yeah, he's, he's twenty he's twenty he's kilograms, yeah, he's, he's three foot high, yeah. He's da 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 da, he's da da da, but he is, but he is not human. Yeah. He's a robot. Yeah. And she's watching, she's just, she's just watching that, right? Bear in mind, the point of the trailer, he's a robot. Yeah. She says, how old was he again? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to slap her. I was livid. I went, he's a robot. He's a robot. That's what's important. <laughs> she, she says, uh, the trailer comes <laughs> on for a war film. She goes, I shan't be seeing that. She just announces it. I shan't be seeing that. And I'm bored with war films. <laughs> bored with them next. Oh, God. Uh, and then, so the, um, the, the title card comes up for Crash and Tiger, Hidden Dragon. You know, like, at the beginning, they yeah. do thing. Yeah. It comes up, Crash and Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Now, she's in the cinema. She goes, what a stupid name for a film. <laughs> I was thinking, but you paid to see it, <laughs> and, and then oh. it says subtitles in brackets. She goes, "Oh, it's not subtitled, is it?" <laughs> so it comes on, and I think I, in in the film, I think they speak maybe Mandarin or, or Chinese or something. I'm not sure, but but let's say it's Mandarin. So they come on, they start, and it's all subtitled, and they start speaking in this uh, in this uh, Mandarin or, or Chinese, and uh, she just starts going, "I think Cheng Chong, I think Cheng Chong, I think Cheng Chong Chong." In the cinema, just saying that out loud. No, she and her boyfriend are cracking up. They're weeping with laughter, right? And I'm trying. He's to He's got to laugh, film. otherwise she bites him. <laughs> exactly. So um. So I'm actually, I'm so livid, so I really make a show of getting up with all my stuff, I get up and I kind of clamber over some of the seats. Yeah. I sit down next to these two teenage girls with the mobile phone. Oh, God. The mobile phone goes off and like you say, instead of, I mean it should have been off anyway. Yeah, of course. But let's say, instead of it being, uh, instead of immediately thinking, oh God, and, and switching it off hurriedly, they take the call in the cinema, I'm in the cinema, yeah, no, I mean, it's start having a conversation. Uh, and I was thinking to myself, I was thinking, you're 16, unless that is your business partner in Hong Kong phoning you, <laughs> saying the deal is not gonna go through, which I suspect it's not. I suspect it's probably Gareth, or Gavin, <laughs> or your boyfriend Tony saying, do you wanna do me behind the bike sheds later? <laughs> yeah. I suspect that's who it is. Yeah. Switch off the phone! Or very least, get out! I know. Get out of the cinema! But it just, I, I can't, I mean, I don't know where these people were brought up or raised. I don't know who it was that, that told them this was this was this was behaviour that you but could do. I, 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 I really want to have cinema police. Yeah. Right. You go in there, and if the they, you, if the phone goes off, you get your money back, and you're asked to leave yeah. straight away. Straight away. Any whispering, go. If you whisper again, you know. Yeah. If you're too stupid to be able to, to figure out, what? yeah, yeah. Just uh, they they tell you what age you should be. Right to get that film. Yeah, that's it. If you listen and you're not eating and you're not talking, then you should be able to get a film. Well, I, I was in the cinema last night, and as I came in, there was a big queue. And as I came in, there was people there uh, taking a ticket, showing you to your seat. Now, wh when did it happen that I was no longer able to find my own seat at the cinema? Why is it that I can go in the daytime, I can find my, I'm left to fend for myself? But now it seems that on a Friday night, no. there's so many stupid people out no, there who can't I th find I their I think that, seat. No, I think that is policing. I think that's to stop people thinking I'll just sit here and having to deal with it themselves. Because mm. I mean, uh, if someone was in my seat, even if I there was another seat, I'd go. Well, no, that's mine. I mm. I, I, mm. I want lots of I want lots of policing yeah. in social occasions. I oh, want yeah. to go into pub and go. That is too loud. That music. Those people are too annoying. They're standing up. They're too annoying. I remember being in the cinema once and seeing a guy. He was a big fat guy again. He had popcorn, the hot dogs, the coke, right? And he had it balanced on this little wall that was uh, uh, sort of separating parts of the cinema. And he was you know, he had it, he was big fat, you know, there. just sat there. I was watching. I think it was Beetlejuice. I was watching. Right. And uh, some uh, some local hard nuts. They were on the same row. They started kicking the little wall to, try to knock, knock his off. food off. And I thought, brilliant. <laughs> oh no! I think you want to bully fat people. Yeah. Play a record, Carl. It's getting really nasty yeah. now. Can I pick on you? <laughs> Fifty Cent in the club on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkerton. Still arguing, this time about having help from your and dad. What do you think, Carl? No, I'm not- we- I don't want this to turn into some sort of wacky type of thing where we're pretending we're arguing. Yeah. Well, we're not pretending. We're not we pretending, are you are arguing. Yeah, I know, I know what people will think we're messing about. Oh, right? that wouldn't have thought so. We just need to- we can talk about it later, sort it out. Hmm. Yeah. It's just that Carl's a little bit stressed. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not stressed, though. And he doesn't really understand that, you know, so, you know, me and Steve have got lots of different jobs in the week, he's just got one job. Yeah. But and we sort of rely on people getting messages to us, you know, as soon as they get them, you know, and not sort of deleting them from their phone selfishly. Yeah. Just things like that, you know, people being on the ball. Not just thinking about themselves all the time, not just thinking about number one. What do you think, Carl? Whatever. Do you mm. know what I mean? Whatever. 
Don't get all maudlin again. Just have a little discussion. Yeah, this'll annoy ya. Guess what? Think of this, you little slaphead twat. Um, apparently, <laughs> that's so in his arse, that's so in his arse. Right, apparently, women can get bald treatment on the National Health Service, but men can't. What do you think of that? Do you think that's fair? Is that a fact? It's a fact. We well, should point out that Carl is, uh, would you say balding? Yeah. Would that be fair? Well, either that or a wide party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It look, he looks like Charlie Brown. He's got the same sort of hair arrangement as Charlie Brown. Yeah, he's, he's- I don't like think it. Charlie was, was balding though, was he? He was only about ten. Well, no, but he just had, like, a couple of sh yeah. things on top, and he's- and he's- his hairdo, Carl's had a hairdo that keeps- It's, it's not a hairdo. <laughs> No. What is it then? What is it? <laughs> it's- it just happened, I've told you. <laughs> no, Noel- Noel- uh, Noel was in, right, once. Noel who? Uh, Gallagher. Oh yeah. Right. Oh right, you're on first name terms. Right. Yeah. And uh- From the hood, isn't he? And- and whoever was doing the interview said, uh, oh, you know, what- will- will Liam be able to keep up that sort of hard attitude, right? Uh, say when he gets older and he goes bald. And, uh, you know, could he- could he still carry off the- the sort of attitude that he's got? And he was like, no, no, he'd, he'd never have that style. He couldn't- he couldn't have that style that lad's got in there and pointed at me. Yeah. I said, it's not a style. <laughs> I said, I didn't go to the barbers and say, can you just, like, shave the top bit, leave the sides? <laughs> yeah. Can you move a little style attack? That's the way it is. <laughs> yeah. Right, and you were just saying to me, what would you do if you- if you went back in time, I'd probably use a better shampoo. <laughs> 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 I, do, I wish we could tape the conversations we have off air. Yeah. Because, I mean, they are ridiculous. <laughs> what would you do if you go back in time? And the other sh stuff we were just talking about is obviously can't talk about. Can I just ask though? Sorry, wh when did you when did you start to notice it was disappearing? I mean, at what age did it kick in? Uh. Uh, I worked a lot. You see, you, you'll- you'll be safe, do you know what I mean? Your hair will stay there, but it's when I used to do a lot of hours. Sure. A lot of hours working <laughs> and yeah, that. you were stressed and things, yeah. Stressed yeah. out. Yeah. And it just went- Well, I'm beginning know, to understand that... what stress is like, you know, cause I'm not getting messages and stuff like that, but yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. probably about, I don't know, twenty- twenty-four. That's uh, unlucky, isn't it? Something like that. And did you- did you panic or did you- were you just not quite sore? Not bothered. Not bothered. <laughs> He's not bothered, he wouldn't be bothered. I'm not bothered. <laughs> but I don't think- for someone who doesn't care about going bald, or war, or SARS, or anything. You don't have to get stressed on a Saturday between one and three. <laughs> to be fair, you are worse <laughs> than all those things. <laughs> <laughs> SARS has got nothing on you when you're in the right mood. <laughs> but why- why is it alright for women then to, you know, have a wig? But I couldn't have one if I wanted one. Well, it's not a wig, they get bald treatment, they actually can get- they can get their hair replaced on the National Health, which might be anything, I suppose. Which might be wigs, which might be transplants. I mean, the only- the only cure for baldness is a transplant, which they literally take, um, follicles. They can get down to individual follicles now, from the back of your neck, and, you know, it takes a long time. And, you know, but, um... Well, people will know anyway, won't they? I don't know when it starts, though. I don't know when it starts. Like, now, if you started wearing a wig, people go, we were wearing a wig because you were bald yesterday. Yeah. You can't- you can't start thinking, right, I'm gonna go bald in a year, I'll start wearing a wig now. That's the thing to do, isn't it? It is really, if you're that bothered, but I wasn't- I, I just thought, right, it's losing it a bit, shaved a lot off. But did you know you had that round head underneath it? Did you know it was gonna be that funny, though? You would've- well, you presumably worn a wig, wouldn't you, if you'd have known? Cause I've never seen a head that round. I think the barber, when they did it, right, the woman <laughs> said, you can pull that off, you've got a good shaped head for, uh, for having it shaved. So she meant- a good head. Yeah, she looks like a tennis ball. You look like a tennis ball when you haven't shaved. She said if you can pull it off, she said that's- that's like a good thing to see if someone's good looking. If you- if they can have a bald head, it's like Sinead O'Connor. Yeah. Right? She can pull it off. There's- there's those sort of things. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, Teddy Savalas. No, but that's like one of the things. If- if you look good with a bald head, mm -hmm. that means you're pretty good looking. Yeah, yeah. And if you can wear a, a bicycle helmet and look good, that's another <laughs> thing that like, you must be pretty good looking yeah, to yeah. pull that off. But who- who- who have you seen <laughs> in the bicycle helmet that you think- that you think's good- who have you seen in the bicycle helmet and thought, oh god, they must be good looking, they're good in the bicycle helmet? Well, everyone that's what I'm saying the bicycle helmet. Who? No one looks good, do they, really? It's so, so what, what did you- would you say Brad Pitt would look good in the bicycle helmet? Well, I don't know, I'd have to see. But I'm just saying that's- that's like one of the two things, really, that's- And what- what blokes do you think look b good, bald? Who do you think would look good, bald? Uh, Dunno, give me some names and I'll tell you whether they'd be alright if they're bald. George Clooney. 
Uh, I don't, I, no, I don't think he does. I don't think he would do. Uh, uh, who else? Well, this uh, could run and run. Um, Al Pacino. Uh, yeah, he could probably pull it off. He'd probably look all right. Do you think he looks all right with hair, then? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, well done, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Sony award-winning stuff. <laughs> Play a record. <laughs> and then the car going, oh. He's stressed. He's stressed. Wild Wild Horses by the Rolling Stones on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Little bald heady Carl Pilkington. You quite like being bald, don't you? Like no I fuss. Can, like I say, you know, I I'll probably s won't age for a bit now. <laughs> won't age for a bit? What do you mean you won't age for a bit? Because I, I already look quite, quite old. I don't think so. Not with, with a hat on, you look really young. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm just saying, so I, I won't, I won't change that much. It's like that. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I actually don't think, if it's, as long as you shave it, whoosh, straight back, that c I can't have you on that. Nothing wrong with it. But that kid who had that aging disease, just shave her head. And she wouldn't, she wouldn't age that fast anymore. Do you know what I mean? She so this is the five-year-old girl who had an awful disease where- Well, we don't know much about it, to be fair. No, we just know that you fell in love with the title of the program, the girl that was older than her mum, right? And you were annoyed that people wouldn't serve her fags and alcohol. If she, if she's, if she's, you know, she's living like an eight-year-old, let her have a fag. Doesn't that sum up this show, though, Carl's <laughs> comment, we don't know much about it. <laughs> Yeah. We're still willing to make comments about it, to discuss it in length and possibly make crass jokes, <laughs> even though we're ill-informed, as ever. Yeah. Right, well, there's something for you, right? Go on. This is, this is what I wanted to tell you about, right? <laughs> Me. Uh, yeah, face transplants. <laughs> <laughs> there's this, uh, this, uh, some kid somewhere, right, who had a bit of a an odd-looking face. A right? bit of a what? Bizarre-looking face. Yeah. yeah. And, um... <laughs> There's a doctor somewhere who said I can sort that out for yeah. you, right? Sure. And basically what they do is they've got to get a face off a dead person. <laughs> right. That's sorry, sorry, just, um, I in this, in, in this documentary you saw, no, did this documentary feature, say, John Travolta and Nicolas Cage? <laughs> was it, was it that documentary you saw? No, right, listen, you, you see, you'd... go on. So, um, okay, no, you can't get a face of a dead person. Yeah, go no, on. Sorry, sorry to dismiss the idea of face transplants <laughs> out yeah. of hand. But go, go on. on. So, um, yeah, it's got to be a face of of a dead body that isn't older than like four hours old, right? Four hours dead, whatever. Mm. Um, they can take it off, mm -hmm. fit yeah. it on, fit it on the new face. It makes sense. It's but it's not just it. your face that you lose it, but it's the muscle, it's muscle tissue and, and bones, isn't it, when it's like disfigured. It could be, could be through fire or whatever or disease or whatever. So they can't just literally plonk a face on, they have to do something else, don't they? You're asking Carl like he's gonna know. <laughs> I, know like he, I forgot then, he looked at it, but was that in Russian? Yeah. <laughs> I wish we could get, I wish we could get him on telly just to show the look on his face when I said that. Yeah. It, it was, was brilliant, ludicrous. wasn't it? <laughs> it was, you know when you, uh, go to a cat, hey, we want some food then? And he just looks at you yeah. and he goes, it's almost like he can understand what we're saying. Mm. Go on. It's like if you had been caught holding a mallet over a dead body <laughs> by the police. <laughs> what, I'm the is, blankly, what I'm nothing. saying is, what I'm saying is, it would sort of work, yeah, if you took, if you peeled your face off mm. and put my face on it, that, oh my god, why don't you and Steve, for an experiment, swap faces? And, and the great thing is, I wouldn't age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you do that if, if, I could, if it was safe? Uh, I, I think I'm getting the rough deal here, though. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Well, no, you would, you'd get some money back. It'd be part exchange. I mean, it would, you know, it's like you'd, you'd make up the difference just to wear your brilliant face for but, a week. But the doctor was saying how, um, <laughs> It's not complicated. He said the worst thing is something about, uh, the people who were related to the dead person. It's a bit weird for them still seeing the face of someone they know walking about when they're sure. dead. Yeah, I can see yeah. that would be old, yeah. <laughs> I love you, Carl. You are brilliant. <laughs> Honestly, you're never a dull moment. Would, it it would doesn't you... matter whether you're talking or I'm squeezing your head. It's, I, it's, I'm never bored. I never go, oh, that's enough, Carl. Do you know what I mean? I never, I used, I had battling tops, I got bored. It's like computer games, you think it's the best game in the world, and someone goes, how are you getting on with Tomb Raider? You go, oh, I don't play it anymore. I go, how's Carl? I go, he's brilliant. 
He's brilliant. I was squeezing it yesterday, I was squeaking in his face, I got him down to the ground. He said this, he said that, I'm never bored with you. It, do you know what I mean? It's brilliant. I'd like to rent you out to people. See me, I'm different. <laughs> I would happily leave him now in the bottom of the cupboard. Mm. <laughs> Until quiz the scale electrics. <laughs> Until the old pub quiz night, <coughs> when there's no one else who will have you on the team. Sure. Oh, and some of you are your best mate. Done him again. Right? Ma yeah, where's his mum and dad then, Carl? Mm. Yeah? In yeah. Bristol. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe oh. it. I love the fact you can insult me but never insult my parents. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Feeder, Butt Rogers. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Blake and Carl, Carl just said to me, so what face would you have to me? And I went, what do you mean? He went, well, whose face would you have? And I went, I don't know, uh, a, a boy's, so uh, the skin would be regenerated. He went, oh, no, I'd be a bit weird. He said, oh, no, someone famous. And I went, oh, I don't know. I went, whose would you have? He went, Barry Sheen. <laughs> No, but what I meant was when I was talking Barry to Susan, Sheen. when I was talking to Suzanne about it, yeah. saying this is amazing, she said, "Well, whose face would you have?" Right now, it's got to be fairly recent to have the skin fresh because it can't be too old. Right. So I had a choice of like Barry Sheen yeah. or uh, what's the face or Flash the Summer Wine. Who? Uh, who's the old woman who just passed away? Thora Heard. Thora Heard. <laughs> So that's what I meant. If I could have any face, because she said, well, you could have had Tom Cruise or something. Mm. I said, well, he's not dead. <laughs> so, no, but you could have had you, that. You give yourself restrictions in your fantasy. So I like, look down the picture. I love the idea that someone getting you a call. Uh, Mr. Wilberton. Uh, hello, it's Dr. Hanrahan. Um, Barry Sheen has just passed away. And you go, oh dear. Um, yeah, bad news and good news. Um, do you want his face or? <laughs> Do you want his face? Does Suzanne go out with you, like, for charitable reasons? <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that she encourages you. Oh, um, she, she was saying about Tom Cruise and I was like, oh, you know, she said, you know, he's not a bad looking fella or whatever. So, well, what she's saying is, Carl, is there any chance you could go and get a different face? Maybe something like Tom Cruise would yeah, be but good. Then, then I was saying, right, first of all, he's got to be dead and he's not. Yeah. But if he was, and you had that done, would you feel like people were looking you at you something? on the tube? Well, no. Like, say, if the people who made Mission Impossible said, "Well, what? I do a third one." <laughs> would I then? Would I be in my right to say, "Well, I don't want to do it"? <laughs> I don't know what he's talking. About. <laughs> I don't mean to be <laughs> offensive, Carl, but your girlfriend could do a lot better than you. <laughs> I don't know what you're thinking. I love the idea of this whole conversation about you with Tom Cruise's face and then get off with a film. But why, okay. do, why does she have conversations like this with you? There was no on last night. <laughs> There's no on the telly. No I on the love chat. it. Uh, what should we talk about? What about uh, getting a new face? <laughs> Oh dear. Oh, was that, oh, that cartoon. Um, if you don't know what Carl looks like, there's a cartoon that was in last week's heat, isn't it, that I drew it on the website. What's, what's it going for now? Bid? I think it's at about, uh, 225 quid at the moment. And what do they have to do to bid for it? Uh, just, just email in and I'll pass it on to the website people. I know why Heat put it in. It's cos the editor, Boyd Hilton, looks a little bit like you, doesn't he? Sort of my ugly brother. <laughs> he's probably listening and he says nice things about you. Yeah, he can still say nice things, but I bet he knows deep down. You know if you're good looking or not, don't you? <laughs> I can't believe Come it! Come on, Steve. Steve. I mean, what it's do you going, think? It's, this is going. <laughs> this is going crazy, you know, Carl. I don't know. You, you're just the insults are flying left, right, and centre. You've got no limits. You've just gone crazy. You've just gone wild. You're swanning around just because you look like Tom Cruise. I think it's because he's been hanging out with Christian O'Connell. Yeah. And they're both thinking, yeah, we're Co a couple of media players. Yeah. Too big for their boots. Yeah, not scared. Although he's scared of Christian. No, he's terrible. He's scared of Christian in here because he's not allowed to do monkey news. No, because well, yeah. Christian wants to do it. He's scared of him. I'm not saying that, right? <laughs> Christian. <laughs> 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 Do monkey news? Oh, Christian wants to do some monkey news. I'm not alone. <laughs> Once around the block, badly drawn boy. I like him. He's funny as well. You know what? I think he looks like if me and you were put in a blender, Carl. Do you know what I mean? He's he's sort of he's got my sort of shape. He's got your sort of accent and all that. Uh, when you put in a blender, does that? <laughs> what a voice. Sort of mix. <laughs> the times I thought of putting the two of you in a blender. Do you remember? I, I told you that thing about the sponges, didn't I? Yeah. 
Yeah, that, that freaked him out. You know if you get uh, two sponges and uh, you dye one red and one blue and you liquidize them, we pour them into a tank of water, after a couple of hours there's a blue sponge and a red sponge because their cells know well, they, and they, they reform. And do you know what he said? He went, oh, how'd you kill a sponge then? <laughs> 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 yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a great thing to say. <laughs> oh, my back's killing me, because I, I, I went, um, you know, I, I did my back in last week and I had to get a chiropractor out and I couldn't walk. Well, as soon as I could walk, I mean, I came in here on my day off and did a, when you were in Bristol with your mum and dad looking mm. after you. Um, and, uh, and then I went to Selfridges Sunday and- Well, you got a bit of money now, why not? <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. And, uh, I went into the sports department and, uh, there's a golf simulator there. Thirty-eight thousand pounds, oh. and it's just like a shed. And I was looking at it like a kid in a sweet shop. And the two blokes that work there, uh, uh, they recognised me. And went, oh, all right, I, do. I said, yeah, good. I mean, I was just looking at that, that simulator. It's brilliant. Isn't it? He went, do you want to have a go? And I went, no, I'm crap. I can't do it. I said, oh, and I got a bad back. And, then, and I went, you have a go. And he did it. And cut down. He went, oh, that's not bad. And he went, do you want to go? I went, yeah, go on then. <laughs> and and I put the ball down. And I really tried my hardest. Of course you did. And it took off. And it was really good <laughs> shot. And he went, good. I went, I went well. I said, I'm I'll go. And I was thinking, I've got to hit this one as well. I've got to hit this one too. And I hit it again. I had three goes. I hurt my back after the first one. <laughs> yeah, but you carried and, on. And it went, right, I said, cheers, thanks very much. And I walked away. <laughs> and I went to Jane. And I went, I've got to get a cab. She went, I just have done my back. She went, well, why did you show off? I went, I had to. Of course you did. That I sums you up. <laughs> that just I was in agony. I was the all the way back. I was. I had to lay on the floor and put ice on my back again for about three hours. What was the best you <laughs> thought could happen? <laughs> that they would just say, oh my God, that guy, <laughs> that's Ricky Gervais. <laughs> Is there nothing he can't do? <laughs> that's exactly what I wanted. Yeah. As I, as I was, I was seeing that, I go, cheers, yeah. As I got about a few yards away, I just slowed down and I, and Jane go, what are you waiting for? I go, listen. Yeah. And it, it, it just go, that man. Is a god. Yeah. And I go, come on, Jane, let's go home. <laughs> yeah. That's just it. all. Uh, have you ever <laughs> been able to walk through a fairground, pass one of those machines, those test your strength machines, yeah. and not have a go at it? Uh, 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 I don't think I'd be very good at that. I bet you cannot walk past one of those rifle ranges and not have a go. I love, I love rifle but ranges. But you've got to be the best, I imagine. Yeah, if someone had just won before me, I'd go, it's not worth it, it's fixed. Sure. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, dear. Pathetic. Yeah, well, so that's why my back's good. It's ridiculous, isn't it? But I also, I don't, I hate not being able to do stuff. It's like I'm punishing the injury. Yeah. I know yeah. if I laid in bed for it, it'd be better, but I go, no, why should I? Yeah. It, I've used to, I used to, when I used to work kid, I used to hit my head on the banister or something, and I used to go and get a hammer and hit the banister. <laughs> and then I started thinking, um, uh, <laughs> when I was about eight, I remember if I'd hurt myself, I'd go, ha ha, God, didn't hurt. <laughs> 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 He's up there thinking, oh, bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> How mental is that? <laughs> Carl, what are you thinking, mate? Alright, rock busters, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Straight to it! Straight to it! Go on then, who's the winner? I've right, oh, got to do the clues again. Right, the first one was, uh, the hitchhiker needs a lift, but in something bigger than a car. Yeah, snappy, go on. VH. Yeah. Right, that was Van Halen. Van Halen? Halen a van? Because he wanted something bigger than a car, that's the, that's the first one. Yeah. Uh, All the tenses one. are mixed up, <laughs> everything, it's just, we could uh, go on. Second one, don't be selfish, uh, and some of that out to your mates, that was C, that was share. Alright. It's alright. Yep. And the third <sighs> one, uh, the Scottish fellas can't get into their emails, the initials there, KL, they, uh, Kenny Loggins. Right. <laughs> That's, that's, that's the last time talk. we do blockbusters. That no. is the last time we do it. No, no, it is. Who's that's the last winner? time. It's, it's, give it, give it, give the prize to someone. Kenny Loggins. Uh, I'm going to give that one Kenny to Kenny uh, Loggins. Helen Perrett. She uh, has emailed in, and uh, actually, Helen, I need you to uh, email in your address if you would, so we can send you those uh, goodies, DVDs in the bag and stuff. Brilliant. But who would get Kenny Loggins? Then? If the, if the clue was good, who would get Kenny Loggins? What did he do? Footloose. Yeah, that famous I film about that, where really? where dancing was banned. Yeah, in that nebulous. <laughs> yeah, that's an extraordinary film. I saw it once in America. <laughs> like you say, Kevin Bacon in a town where dancing has been banned. I was watching it. It was like if aliens had been watching Earth, but only monitoring us through our TV and, and films. Yeah, and then tried to make a film about humans. That's the film they'd end up with. What do you think? Uh, what do they think? Uh, they think of uh, Queen the Musical because they're <laughs> of course rock and roll's banned, <laughs> isn't it? In the future, that's I'm not looking forward to the future, Rick, where feelings and emotions are going to be banned. I, I can't believe it. Where's our hoverboards? Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, well done to, uh, to Helen Perry. Is that the last time we do Rockbusters? No. Yeah. Do it again. Yeah, after time. the break, Monkey News. No, we, we'll play, uh, oh yeah, we'll, we'll do a break. Don't know about Monkey News, got some other stuff as well. We did Monkey News after oh, the break. Yeah, yeah. Radiohead, they're there. Like everything they ever do, that's grown on me more and more. Oh, that's brilliant. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Well, you know what it's time for, don't you? Oh, chimpanzee that! Monkey news. <laughs> it always gets me, that jingle. It's a joy. Yeah. What's what, please? Well, Carl, do you reckon you could sort out- do you rather have people to have real jingles with their name on it and don't have to say who's in the room, what's happening, and do their own jingles? Well, Christian's got one for it. For monkey news that he does. Why is Christian doing monkey news? I don't understand this. Because he did it ages ago. So you ripped it off of no, Christian? I haven't ripped it off. I said to him, I said, there's enough monkey news to go around. But <laughs> <laughs> right? well, hold on, though. I don't want cast offs. No, I thought this was your idea. No, let's not do it. But what's no, but new? Wait, wait, Come wait, on, wait. What's new? What? There's monkey news out there. It, it, I mean, if he wants to have a meeting in the week and say, well, this is the news I've got, the way I see it is, he can do it in the week. He's doing like the, you know, the news at 10 type monkey news. We're on on a Saturday. We're like the. You know, Jeremy Paxman, Monkey News Night. We look at stuff in more in depth. Well, you can very much right? get behind the Monkey News, it's true. Yeah. You sort of interpret it. You give it your own spin. You're, the, you're, you're the man behind the monkey behind the news. I mean, <laughs> I know that. Yeah. So, are we, so but ours is called Monkey News anyway. It's sort of a generic term, like the news, but ours is called Chimpanzee That, isn't it? Yeah, but he's, he's seen a bit of Monkey News in it. Oh, so, are we doing it or not? Well, I, I, I've got no reason I, to I, stop I, doing I, Monkey I, News. I, I, it, um, he probably played Radiohead as well. Well, should I know. Should I we not do that? I said that David Attenborough did Monkey News before all of us. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> but I, I mean, I personally don't listen to Christian because I don't get up that early. So, you know, I'm no, missing out on a lot of Monkey News. I mean, I'm not I'm not saying, I'm not, what I'm saying, I don't listen to it because I don't get up that early. Right, I'm not right. saying it's a bad show. My point is this, there's a lot of people I imagine who don't listen to, uh, Monkey News in the week, they're perhaps, they miss it or they're busy. It's nice to have a little kind of omnibus Monkey News at the weekend <laughs> with Carl Pilkington. So right. that's what this is. So we're doing it then. Let's play the jingle. Oh! Chimpanzee that monkey news night. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Good. So, um, we'll sort of uh, get some monkey experts on maybe next week to dissect it. Right. You ready? Yeah. Right. Is this monkey? Right. Oh, yeah. It's called Jack. Yeah. <laughs> right. I got pally with this bloke who worked in a railway station. <laughs> <laughs> How? How? Pen pals? I, I don't know. I didn't say all internet, that. Probably, internet, probably. Internet. I'm sure. Chat rooms on the internet. I'm sure. <laughs> So, um, anyway, he's helping him out all the time. It's this fella's job, right, to, uh, sort of make sure it's safe for the trains to come in, that sort of thing, right? But he's always working on his own, so he's, he's got his mate Jack in with him, right? This, this little monkey. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they're having a good time. They share lunch together and stuff like that. Anyway, it gets to a point when the fella whose job it is, right, starts mm. getting old, uh, and Jack, the monkey, starts getting more involved. Presumably this is a chimpanzee as opposed <coughs> to a monkey, you mean? When I you say it's monkey, uh, it's generic term, you mean, you mean... You mean chimps usually, don't you? Yeah. Go on then. <clears throat> so, um, you know, he's, he's clocking the fella doing his job and he's thinking, I can do this. Right, the monkey. <laughs> I'd love it. Yeah. He's helping out, he's, uh, pulling down the levers and stuff. Yeah. So the train sort of come in on the right lines. Sure, 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 yeah. He's yeah, clocking yeah. it, he sticks his head out of the little window, see the trains coming and that. I have British Rider listening. <laughs> yeah. Right? Uh, in the end. Oh, yeah. The fella whose job it is, he lost a leg for some reason, couldn't work anymore. Lovely. Gave Jack the job. Yes. Right. Okay. The railway company are happy with that. <laughs> I'm sure they, 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 they interviewed a number of people, but he was the best <laughs> monkey for the job. <laughs> and that's, that's good, isn't it? Well, it's not true. Right. Once again. Well, it's not true. Don't hand Steve a piece of paper that someone put on the internet who is probably a bigger mentalist than you. That's not proof. It's not true. At no point did a railway company give a chimpanzee the job of signalman? It was ages ago. Uh, uh, what? Steve, when was it? it was before, like before trains, 19, probably. Well, so. it's, uh, in the 1880s. Yeah. Uh, according to this piece of paper, which is what you've based your monkey news on. Now, of course, I think ITN and a lot of the news channels, they tend to get lots of independent <laughs> confirmation of their news before they give it out as fact. <laughs> but you've got an email from someone, so let's assume that's real. It says, for this, Jack was officially put on the railway payroll, earning two cents per day and have half a bottle of beer on Saturday. <laughs> that's what we pay you, isn't it? <laughs> 
<laughs> he doesn't even get the beer. <laughs> oh dear, he's not allowed to drink, are you? Someone emailed in actually and said, uh, Carl, some years ago, did you die and they took your face <laughs> and transplanted it onto that of a chimpanzee? <laughs> <laughs> it would make a lot of sense. I've never seen you. You never. He always, he always has um, t-shirts right on up and long sleeve. I bet he's hairy under there. Yeah. I bet you are hairy because you have to shave right up to your eyes. You're one of them, aren't you? And I can see the growth and it comes out the, the top there. Are you really hairy underneath? I'm pretty hairy. Are you really? Well, what's wrong with what's wrong with that? You're a, you're a human Z, aren't you? That's why you're fascinated with them and why your, your IQ is sort of about eighty. I think you might be. You, I, I don't mean uh, there was any. I think it was a genetic sort of sort of throwback. Well, you're pretty hairy. Look <laughs> at your arms. <laughs> <laughs> Just look, give me that banana and shut up. Play a record. <laughs> That's mine. Cheering breaks. Average man on XFM, one or four point nine. Well, nearly another show over, Carl. You know I've got a squeaky chair there. Why don't you sort that out? Have it oiled. What do you, what do, you do in the week? Do you know what I mean? Can I just, um, nominate a woman that annoyed me today? Go on. Uh, on the tube. I got off at Piccadilly Circus. Um, the sign says, mind the gap. Big sign saying, mind the gap. Voice on the, uh, tannoy says, mind the gap. Woman steps over the gap, goes, oh, that's dangerous. <laughs> 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 I was living. I was just annoyed. I wanted to slap her. There's always one in there every day. Well, just, uh, so, so, as you walk down the street, I just feel like I want to squat certain people out the way. Well, squat them out the way. We like went, a... we went into this, uh, uh, little restaurant, me and go to, uh, me and Carl. Was it Thursday? And we're sitting down there, and um, it's busy outside. And we were going to get the back. She went, "That's no smoking." I went, "Yeah, we're not a smoke." So we sit there right at the back. Right? We get there, and there's just another. There's two women there, right? And I'm sitting there, and they light up a fag. And I go to Carl. There meant to be no smoking. He went, "Yeah." So what? I went, "Well, it's the principle. The rules are there." He goes, "Rules? You say twat, muff, and shit on air. Then mind rules. I went, well, they've annoyed me now, right?" Yeah. So the waitress comes over and he's put. He goes, "Oh God!" He puts his head down as well. I said, uh, "I said, uh, I don't know why I said it like this." I went, um, "I thought there was no smoking." <laughs> of course, right? Yeah. <laughs> she went, "It is, yeah." And I went, "Right, okay. Well, they're smoking." She went, "She went, oh, well, you'd have to move then." I went, "What?" She went, do you want to smoke? I said, no, I don't want to smoke. I said, they're, I said, they're smoking over there, right? Try not to, uh, and she went, oh, well, I told you. I said, no, I don't want to smoke. They're smoking. <laughs> she went, oh, right, and I got, I got a move, didn't I? See, that's what a little it. snitch. <laughs> yeah. But it annoyed me. Do you worry, though, that, that someone's <laughs> gonna look around and go, it's like Ricky Jones off the telly? Yeah, well, I can't complain now. I swear, if I go in, I get bad service, I can't complain, because I think, oh, look at him, he thinks he can complain. So I have to do it, I have to do it, um, secretly. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? But, um, uh, oh, there was a. Uh, oh God, right. People come up to me, they recognise me, and they all give autographs, and I, I don't mind it at all. I don't know, I never know what to say, and I'm always, you know, I say thank you very much. I say love the show, whatever. I say of course, and, and that's great, and they're polite. And I was in the pub the other day, uh, and I was ju just with Johnny, and um, people had been coming up. They go, do you mind? I said, no, no worries at all. Yeah, it's absolutely fine. Right, and um, and then this group came in about. Eight twenty somethings, right? And they're they're a bit pissed up. And this woman comes up to me, right? And she goes, she stands there. She goes, ah, right. We like you in our house, right? But you're not as good as Paul Calf. And I went, oh yeah, Steve Coogan. I said he's brilliant, isn't he? She went, yeah, yeah. You're not as good as him. I went, oh well. You know, it's not bad to come second to, is it? And then, because I did that, she went, she went, ah, oh, no, you're, you know, we, you know, you're great. I, I've just done my dissertation. I went, oh, right, well, it's in nursing. She went, yeah. She went, ah, oh, right. Anyway, she went, ah, oh, can I have a hug? And I went, well, she went, can I can have a kiss. I went, well, not really. No. And then this woman who wanted to take a photo, she went, oh, you were so nice on the BAFTAs. I went, well, I am being nice. I just, I'd rather, I, you know, I don't know you. And I, I was, oh, God, it was embarrassing, right? And then, um, so I took a picture, right? And then she goes, anyway, and they sort of dragged her away. They make sort of dragged her away. And then, uh, uh, I was going, oh, God, oh, God, God, I've got to go now because they're over there. I said, I can't, I can't stand it. I don't mind. Uh, and, uh, she came and she, she came over and she went, Ricky, and she sat down and I went, I'm going. Uh, and I just, I had to go. And then I was with Johnny and Johnny went, oh God, I've left my bag there. So we had to go back and go, but she's going through the bag. Oh. She, she, and she went to me, you bastard, I'll never effing watch you again. I thought, well, all right. I don't know what to say, yeah. really. Nice of her to clean up her bad language. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, she Family knew. pub. <laughs> I know, she No, knew. I just, I got no time for it. I just think it's, it's out of order. You know, I, I mean, 
this this whole sort of notion that that it's, if you're a celebrity, you're public property. I don't. I just how I discount it. They go, people, you know, what you hear people say, oh, it's me who put you where you are today. And I think, well, yeah. Thanks for watching, but but we made the show and everything. I we know. Put it, we put it on the TV. It's not like if you get a plumber around, he does his job and work for you. you don't go around his house and hassle him. I don't, or, or it's not. I don't seek it. I don't. You know what I mean? I don't phone up the. But you know what I mean? I don't try and get on the telly or anything. And I, I refuse to. I don't go to showbiz parties, but I refuse not to go to the pub with my mate. And I just seek out. There's fewer and fewer pubs, and I just go to the the quietest. You know, with one old bloke and a dog, and it's sort of like. But most people are really. I love brilliant. it, honestly, honestly. But, people but, who come out and they're polite, and I, I chat. Like, I love people, the show. It's like it's alcohol. It's alcohol. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's just oh god. They mutate into something. You know, and they different. just yeah, they, they don't understand. Yeah, of course, they don't. You know, they're not. They're but to me, it's really. the same people who who who, who be bad, behave badly in the cinema. It's just this breed of person. It just, it just. I mean, I know. Can I put them in room one hundred and one? Let's do that next week, shall we? What are we all having a moan? Yeah, go on. Tell you who's annoyed me this week. Go, go on. on. If we we're making a little feature. Go on. David Blunkett. What's Blunkett been up to? He's uh, he's reading yesterday. His, his dog has been. He's not. His dog's not been round your house again. No, causing trouble outside. He's put a stop to people having sex outdoors. What's what do you mean? What's up with that? <laughs> if he had sight, would he have stopped it? <laughs> <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> I thought we were not trying to offend anyone. <laughs>